Well, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. I'm Corny Swiss, and today is another two-for-one video. You're going to see a realistic uh, flying gameplay, and then some tank gameplay. And in this realistic battle, I'm flying the F7F Tiger Cat. And this thing has kind of garnered a reputation of being spammed. And to some degree, I can see why. This is actually my first realistic uh, battle on this thing. And because I'm trying to get into realistic battles and I'm not very good, obviously I'm trying to pick the planes that either people think are really strong or have forgiving things about them. For example, as long as with this plane, it's a really pure energy fighter. So, or at least that's my impression of it. So that means I don't need to bother with turning and things like that. I just line up my attack run, do it, and then run away. And that's totally fine by me because there are plenty of people flying these battles who are really good and have all these different maneuvers and are just going to outclass me completely as a pilot. So that was that's kind of my strategy for picking planes. I've also I also have another clip from a ME410 video, uh, game I had that was pretty fun because that's another plane where it's just has a bunch of cannons. You just line up, you shoot them a bunch, and then you fly away. That's it, you know. And hopefully they don't catch you. And sorry if I sound a little weird in uh, this video. I'm starting to get sick, and it kind of sucks. But, you know, I'm going to hang in there. So, the net of what's happening right now in the battle is the bombers are below me. There's four B-17s. They're all squatted up. And I'm kind of flying sort of top cover. My goal is to not let... Uh, enemy planes make a pass on him, however this, there's going to be a Fokker Wolf 190 that's going to make a go at him. He's not going to get any of them, but I'm going to give pursuit and chase him through the formation and then down out the other side. And here you can see I'm kind of flipping over and trying to roll in onto his tail. There we go. Try and give him the good news. And what I'm going to do here is and obviously everything I do in this replay is subject to criticism because I'm not very good and I'm just starting out. But here I'm going to decide I'm too close. I can't, I don't think I can turn with him. So I'm going to go up higher and then flip over and come down on him and basically take away the whole turning thing. And this gives me a chance to better line up my guns, but he eventually goes down. So that's my, that's my first kill, I guess. But the unfortunate thing is now the bombers are about 8 kilometers, I believe, away from where I am. And they're actually being set on by a few different planes, mainly Fokker Wolves. Which obviously is a little, a little annoying because we have, a, we have a bunch of fighters, but we weren't really... The bombers were kind of just off doing their own thing. They were flying close to give each other machine gun support, but ultimately that's going to be a little bit of an issue. Because they're slowly going to get picked apart. And that's a little unfortunate. And you can actually see the tracer rounds from the, uh, the AI gunners lighting it up. But I'm basically I'm rushing over here to attempt to get, give some help. What actually happened there, I think that... I think one of their players actually rammed one of the B-17s. Can't tell. I'm trying to give this Fokker Wolf the good news. I'm not a very good shot in realistic. That's something I've learned pretty quickly. But I have two kills now, so can't really complain. And I'm using the replay system here because um, for planes, I think it's okay. It's not the best, but it's, it's certainly better than it was. Tanks, I, I can't use it because it, it's weird. It, it doesn't work. Uh, well, it works, but when you go to your, per, your player view, it's all weird and messed up. So I'm not going to be doing that. I spotted this Fokker Wolf coming in on me, but because I'm such a terrible shot, um, I missed every shot. <laughs> and I, something I, I kind of learned from this plane is I'm totally fine with accepting head-ons. I mean, you never should. But with this plane, you have four 20mm cans and four 50 cals. There aren't many things that are going to outgun you. So accepting a head-on, getting those shots off and, they, and breaking away seems like a decent strategy in this plane. Especially because you're 
turning is I think this thing turns all right but it's certainly not the an agile beast like a zero and this guy's climbing he's a little low on speed so that was pretty kind of free I don't know it wasn't free that's for sure I had to work because I'm such a horrible shot but I mainly wanted to include this replay just to show that uh, I am in fact trying to uh, get into realistic battles just because it's they're fun it's certainly fun when you get into these sort of dog fights but so right here I got my uh, got my wing chopped off which is a little unfortunate I did light during while I was talking I managed to kill another plane which was my third kill and the guy I lit on fire is gonna burn out and uh, eventually die unfortunately after I crash but um yeah so I'm just gonna hit the ground really really hard but I think it's okay if we move on to the the tank replay don't you think and in this battle I'm driving my T-34E on Mozdok in a realistic battle and this battle I thought was really fun because of how I guess aggressively it swung towards our team and then back towards theirs and so on because as I come up over this hill I spot basically their entire enemy team and they're all bum rushing the cap we just secured and there's a lot of them there's certainly a lot of tanks down there it's gonna be very difficult to hit them at this range that's for sure so I'm gonna pretty quickly decide that I just I can't stay here their guns are gonna perform better at this range than mine so I really need to close the distance and get into a position where I can better overwatch the cap and try and prevent them from moving into the cap. And the I guess the advantage that my tank has is I have I guess more effective armor at this range because I have spaced armor I can angle and uh, I have a pretty good turret front so I should be okay in terms of taking hits but my gun performance is what's gonna hold me back here and they're actually moving into the cap right now. I can see them moving around in there, but I'm just too far away to really effectively engage. So I'm going to stop here to take some pot shots. But ultimately, I'm going to decide I just need to push up there and uh, get into the cap. Because we're going to be having some a couple KV-1s. You can see them in the left part of the screen. They're moving up through the field. So I need to be up there to support them. Because if they can get into the cap, we can basically just outright win the game. Because if they can get there, they now can one cap, but then I can swing in front of them onto one of these low hills and basically shoot them all, shoot the enemy before they get to the cap. So we'll basically cap for free and I'll be the, the roadblock. That's the goal. That's kind of what's going to happen. So you, you can see that they're kind of the two KV-1s. Well, one is definitely YOLO rushing into the cap. The other one is getting there. Because it really doesn't matter if they cap at this point. That's not so much a problem as more so it's more important for us to move together to assault the cap than it is for them to cap. Because whoever wins this battle right here is probably going to win the game. If they can kill all of us and maintain their cap control, we probably lose. Whereas if we kill all them and uncap, we probably win. So it's fairly important for us to uh, eliminate their numbers advantage in the cap. And we have a bunch of teammates now rolling up behind us to uh, assist. But this is what I was kind of talking about. We have the KV-1s kind of trying to dig out the uh, cap circle. Meanwhile, I'm kind of, I guess you could say distracting from the, uh, distracting them from the KV-1s by sitting over here and taking the shells from, uh, they're like support fire from farther out in the field. Triple A, I'm going to say, Triple A are kind of annoying. Like, I'm not, I know he can damage me, but at the same time, I'm just not horribly concerned. I don't know. 
But I have been killed by AAA. So, it is something to keep note of. We have this 3N moving in on the cap. And there we go. We're, we're starting to basically wrest control of this area from the the menace the enemy menace and I'm just getting pelted by this uh, AAA and he's at a range where it's difficult for me to do anything about him mainly because I'm buns at shooting but we're gonna give this 3N the good news and from here on out, we're going to maintain control of the cap. It's going to be very difficult. Because you think about it, now we have a whole bunch of tanks, just like they did, in, uh, in the cap circle. Which is good for trying to maintain control of it. And unfortunate for that B BF-110, fortunate for us, he didn't bomb anybody. But now it's kind of important that once you maintain, once you have control over ground which is important but probably not defensible that cap circle is kind of in the open it's important to move forward to a more defensible location or just a more critical location like this low ridge and prevent them prevent the enemy from regaining the ground you're trying to protect so we don't want to have a battle in the cap circle we want to have a battle i guess closer to their spawn because the more basically the more the farther we can get away from the cap, the more likely we are to maintain control of the cap because it gives our, it gives us time to, for our, if we lose someone, it gives them time to drive all the way back. We maybe get in a position to overwatch the cap if we get overrun. So it's pretty vital for us to kind of push the issue. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. They have a whole bunch of tanks out here that are preventing us from really going any farther. But you can also see that we're dwindling their numbers to the point where it's going to be very difficult for them to mount an effective counterattack within the time frame they have. Because as you can see, they're all spawning and they're really far away. And while they've been spawning, we've had our guy our guys that got knocked out and had extra tanks or the ability to call in extra tanks are rushing back or bringing in planes or whatever so in essence because they're I guess mainly because their counterattack to our initial push didn't really they couldn't maintain the cap it might have just been better to sit back but Basically, I think we won this from the beginning because we were able to, we put the pressure on them to attack the cap, and we were in a better position to counterattack after they gained control. We had two heavily armored KV-1s moving in, and they were able to clean up and uh, take care of the enemy push there. And then I was... And then they were paying attention to the KV-1, so I was able to sit on that little ridge and just shoot away and cause issues for them. And now it's just a function of we're just cleaning up. They're too far away. Their spawns are too far away to really affect the, uh, the cap circle. So at this point, it doesn't matter if you get knocked out or whatever. They just don't have enough time. Which is... Which, you know, it's may probably frustrating for them, but at the same time, means you can YOLO as uh, as the winning team. I'm trying to knock out this Stug before the game ends, but it's not going to happen. But I hope you've enjoyed uh, these two replays. Like I said in the previous replay, I'm trying to get more into, to get more into the whole realistic planes thing, and then eventually into the simulator planes thing. My issue with... I guess my issue is I'm not good with the I'm not to that level with the planes yet. I need to keep practicing. I need to keep improving, and uh, find planes that I'm good at or planes that are easy to fly to uh, really take the step in the simulator. But I need to get good at realistic first. It's definitely a stepping stool. So I hope you and I'll see you next time.